challenge which is un underestimated in preclinical development is the challenge of biological complexity. So in cell cultures, we may have uh, endothelial cells and macrophages and tumor cells, and we feel we are very happy if we can eradicate the tumor cells from our cell culture dishes. And uh, in other cases, we are happy if we can target the macrophages, but the body is more complex than that. For example, here is a visualization of macrophages in the spleen. We have red nanocarriers, which are taken up by macrophages in the spleen. We have green uh, classical macrophage stain, which stains the cells in a different area of the, of the spleen. And we have uh, metalloproteinases, which are uh, colored rows, which still stain in another area. So in a simple, single view of a microscope, we can see that macrophages are not just macrophages doing their job, but they behave in a hugely different way across the body. And we need to master these complexities, even of individual cells, to, to be more precise in our future development and treatment. And for that, we need more complex models than cell cultures. Another challenge for nanomedicine is that uh, a new approach in medicine needs to give an advantage to the clinician. Now, the clinician doesn't think in materials. It's completely irrelevant for a clinician if a, if a nanocarrier is built from silicon, from polymer, or for go from gold nanoparticles, or if it's not nano at all. To him, the question is, how can I optimize my workflow? Half of the money in healthcare is not spent on, uh, on uh, real helping the patient, but on just managing the patient, uh, having him in a room, giving him, giving him, him food, moving him from one ward to another, uh, preparing operating rooms and so on. So if we can shorten, f uh, simplify the infrastructure in healthcare, in a hospital, this will save a lot of mo money, even if the drug is significantly more expensive. And that means if you are going to produce expensive medicines, and nanomedicines in some cases will be expensive because they are more complex than conventional drugs, we need to think about how can we save money overall in other aspects of the patient, patient management. For example, if you get patients with respiratory problems or chest pain in the hospital today, we're looking for clinical high-risk features. We ask the patient, the patient some questions, we do a physical exam, we do an EKG, and then we do a point of care test, and the results of such point of care tests decides the further management of, it, of the patient. Now, if we have better point of care tests, even more, ex uh, point of, uh, more expensive point of care tests, this will allow us to, to give a more focused therapy. For example, if we had a test which not only detects pneum uh, pneumococcal antigen, but also would give us uh, antibiotic susceptibility. On the bad side, we could switch from a very expensive antibiotic, which costs 400, uh, 300 euros a day, to penicillin G, which costs uh, $3, uh, 3 euros a day. So helping early on, facilitating the, the, uh, the, the triage, the, the pathway of the patient would really help us clinically. Another challenge I see is the question of personalized nanomedicines versus the blockbuster paradigm. Historically, pharmaceutical industry has always tried to convince us that everybody needs something, needs uh, ACE inhibitors, needs beta blockers, needs whatever. So the paradigm was if a patient comes into the hospital with a myocardial infarction, all need a beta blocker, all need aspirin, all need cholesterol lowering medications. But individual patients differ significantly. And uh, if we look at these mega trials, we know that within these mega trials there are sub subgroups of patients who behave differently. Some profit more, some profit less, and in the future we would like to uh, be much more precise in understanding the patients, maybe by analyzing the genome, the proteome, the metabolome, and maybe even design and assemble the optimal nanodrug for a given patient or small patient groups and cure this patient while all the patients who would not profit but would get the side effects and the costs are left out from the treatment. So a big question is, shall we and could we move away 
from this blockbuster paradigm in pharmaceutical development? This is a huge challenge for various reasons. One question is how can we design and produce freely composable multi-component drug systems which separate transport, targeting, release, and biological pathway targeting? How can we adapt this to a given patient or disease in a sufficiently short time? How can we do preclinical and clinical trials for such personalized designer drugs? How can we get regulatory drug approval for such multi-component drug, uh, multi drug systems? And what kind of industries and enterprises are needed to achieve such a new paradigm for medicine? The challenge of immunotoxicity is a major one in my view, and we have uh, a little bit forgotten about that. Even PEC, the, the, the kind of oldest and most important uh, polymer, shows important uh, immunotoxicity in some patients. Here we have used the polymeric drug uh, carrier together with the group of um, Osna and Sebeni and looked at uh, the activation of the complement system if you have uh, 8 kilodalton in size and we just change a single chemical group in the polymer and we see huge differences in these four different species we test. How can we predict such immunotoxicity and how can we avoid and eliminate it for the future? I think this is a key question for application of nanomedicines to the diseases in particular other diseases than cancer. We have the challenge of basic versus applied research. The funding agency tend to finance uh, fundamental understanding, ultimate limits of physics, but in clinical application we know that we have to go back to orders of magnitude to achieve something which is doable at a reasonable price in a reasonable time point. And then I, I remind you that we should always think of the ethical challenge of medicine. New developments in technology have always influenced uh, the thinking about men and the uh, practice of medicine. And also what you are doing may have an impact on the ethics of medicine.